Good morning, Melbourne. It is Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 100 and this ripper human. Shandor Earl. He's a rugby player for the Melbourne Storm and has a podcast called Shandor's Podcast. It's not called that. It's called Fueled by Fire. Read it wrong. Ah, well, what can you do? Keep trucking. Here's Earl. Welcome. Thank you. It's now, great I to know be here. that I know that you're a wonderful sportsman and all that, but I'm the most interested in the fact that you own Dino's F45. Jim. Yes. <laughs> now, how often do you see our friend Dino in there? No, more often than not, actually. Yeah, He's been you. having a good dig since he's been there. What, what's that? Why is that music come well, on Brown, when we talk about your F45 experience? Brownie broke the Brisbane Lions bench press. Oh, that's right. Break, yeah, yeah. To yeah, this yeah. song, so it's like How, my G-up song. It's a proud man. I listened to it on the way to see probably, Sean Dock. Probably don't want to talk about it in front of a rugby league player. Though. How much can oh, you yeah. bench press, by the way? Yeah. What's, your, uh, what's your max? <laughs> this is your segment's one. I don't know if bench press is my forte. Maybe like, I'm going to get stitched up for this. 130 kilos? Nice. <laughs> is that good? Why don't you just say balloons? <laughs> Brownie's a big man, mate. Thank you, you for yeah, my... Brownie is a big man. Thank you for my breast reduction this, One... this year. It's been breast really reduction. Mate, It's been a pleasure. It's been awesome. A breast reduction. Yeah, over six months. No, you've done well. really well. You've done really well. He's a... Uh, mate, the, the Storm, they're on fire this year. That yeah, we're two year, points uh, are clear on the ladder now. So mm. a bit of a rough start. Sort of, it was probably six weeks ago. A bit of a rough patch, but um, the boys have come good, so... Hopefully finding some form. Now, just before we lose you completely, Christine, mm. I want to be, I have... <laughs> I, to I acknowledge this great I, team in our town. Though. Absolutely. That's but the it, great way to put it because this team is just every year they um, represent us uh, and themselves with just... They're, they're one of the greatest or sporting organisations you can imagine. And I wanted to ask Sandor about... It's not even urban myth. This is what is generally known that... Youngsters come down to the club for the first time, Swanee. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the AFL, they just straight in the system, you train and stuff like that. What do the Melbourne Storm make their new recruits do for one or two weeks with the start of their um, tenure down there at the Storm? Yeah, so there's two things they do initiation-wise. The first one is it uh, doesn't matter who you are, how many games you've played, uh, you come down to the Storm and you have to do two weeks of uh, hard labour. So you could be doing <laughs> concreting, landscaping, digging holes, whatever it is, and then uh, that's before you get to training. So you train in the gym at five. You go and work a full day and then train in the afternoon for the first two I weeks. Why is that? is that? Well, I guess it's to, just as you come in, understand what it's like on the other side. So you have that appreciation. So when you go back to training, you just, you don't take it for granted. That's sort of what I took out of it. So I think oh, it works great. It. I think it's really I good concept that. from Bell's And it doesn't matter who you are. That's the thing. Like Chandler is an experienced player. Yeah. Uh, has played for other clubs. No, nah, straight in. You, you like that, Swanee? Well, well, I love that. Well, I did what too. did you do? Landscaping. Yeah, landscape was tough. Like <laughs> I'm a barra. In the middle <laughs> yeah, of summer you do. too, be in the middle of pre-season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so laying lawns, digging holes, carrying concrete. Was, yeah. And whose idea is this? <laughs> it's Craig's. So oh, he does Craig it. Craig Bellamy, like said, the coach, Swanee. I'm, I have got a bit of experience, but there's been players with far more than me that have come down and bang straight into the into work for two weeks. That is great. Right. Yeah. What's he like, Ballyake? Because we see him... We, we, he seems like he's a scary man beyond the scenes. Oh, he can be, but I think he's got a bit of a softer side. I, I, I've been told that he's softened up a little bit, but he's just a good bloke. Like, you can have a conversation with him, have a laugh, but then when he speaks, he just commands attention. He so. does give a spray out, though, doesn't he? He does give a spray. He sprays literally, too. So you're saying, he's, you're saying I read between the lines, I like to do that with our guests, that, he, that he's mellowed, that he's just like a diddly old man now. That doesn't <laughs> he's know what he's talking about. Yeah, no, wow, no, that's no, interesting. He's definitely not. Interesting. <laughs> Time for this. And now it's time to play AFL or NRL. I love this game. It's been a long time. It's been so long. Right. It was the first time you've heard it. This is where Pangy and, and Brownie uh, recount stories mm. of um, sportsmen yeah, well, behaving Shandor in funny ways. So is it ways. me versus Brownie? Or? No, it's just, no, you're, just right. you're just one out, mate. Because You just need to guess if it's the a idea, story from yeah. the NRL. Often, often we'll he'll hear stories uh, down here in Melbourne of of, uh, of um, shenanigans yes. uh, from uh, rugby league players up north. And we'll, Brownie and I noticed that we just, uh, down here we seem, tend to take the high moral ground and go, oh, we would never do things like that. But really, when you dig down deep, <laughs> both codes have... They've got their black marks. They've got a checkered past. <laughs> They've both got their checkered past. So we throw up a scenario, and all you have to decide is it, is it from NRL or AFL. So, Jonathan, you can right, okay, get I'll lead off the off. NRL or AFL. In 1985, on an end-of-season football trip to Los Angeles, a prominent member of the football team with a checkered past in team photos made his way to the front galley and proceeded to announce to the passengers via the PA system, this is your captain speaking, <laughs> and I would like to inform you that this plane is going down. I reckon AFL. 
Correct. Yes. Correct. Superstar. I just don't think leagueies are going to LA in 1985. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's probably spot that was on. a great. Yeah, that I was a great sure. Robert Gronewegen from Footscray. Oh, the great man. <laughs> All right, this one here. Uh, this one here. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit shorter, but I'll just get to the yeah, point. You go shorter. This man was the captain of the club, and he was fined for urinating on a police car the day after his wedding in Byron Bay. <laughs> mm, I'm going to say NRL. <laughs> You are correct. <laughs> was, it the week? was it the week? We've got a bit of history. That was Greg Bird, yeah. the captain of the he Gold Coast Tide. Twenty. Well the day known, after North. his, the day after his wedding. Well, man's got to go. Nah, fair enough. Was great, Come on, give us another one, Bang. I think you'll get this one too. This is in two thousand one in a game. Uh, this gentleman was charged with inserting his fingers into the bottom of three players. He claimed later he was trying to give the opponents wedgies. The Opponents claimed they could tell the difference. <laughs> NRL or NRL or AFL? Look, I wish it was AFL, but uh, it's NRL. It's NRL. Yeah, it is. John Hopewadi, the great Hopewadi. Yes. John Hopewadi. Uh, oh, here's one. I'll just get. I'll give you another one. Give you another one. Now one that's more. an intro, That's more. a signature move right there. That's amazing. Hard to live that down. You know, I saw John. Last time I saw John Hopewadi, he was he was working the door of a nightclub. Hope in, you weren't pointing at him. No, I wasn't. No. Pointing <laughs> at him. There was a night. Was at a nightclub in Sydney. Of which he was on the door. Yeah, yeah. And, I bet uh, he was. Yeah, and I absolutely was uh, well behaved. Uh, <laughs> what about shake, this? What about this one? Hand? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this one here. Uh, this te- a teammate broke the jaw of his teammate standing outside an LA nightclub uh, as the as one of the one of the men wanted to get inside to the nightclub to have a selfie taken with Rihanna. <laughs> Oh, that's a tough one. Um, the LA thing's throwing me off a little bit again, but I'll say rugby league for that one. Incorrect, was Chandler. Oh. That was the great Campbell Brown from the Gold Coast Suns, Swanee, who oh. broke the jaw of his teammate because his teammate was embarrassing him. He wanted to get inside the nightclub to have a selfie taken with Rihanna. Well, that's one way Regal to use the situation. Chandler oh, well. Earl, we love you. Yeah, uh, no, we're going to tell us why, tell us why to listen to Fueled by Fire. What's it all about, your podcast? Yes, so uh, Melbourne Storm have given me an awesome opportunity to sort of uh, run my own podcast. And I thought, how can I leverage off my past and story and have something positive come out of it? So I thought I'd uh, speak to as many athletes as I could about their own stories of adversity that's mm-hmm. ultimately fueled their success. So trying to get that inspirational story and then some key mental actions and takeaways that everyone can use, whether they're athletes or day-to-day life or just trying to develop themselves. So it's Amazing. Yeah, it's Love turning it. out pretty cool. Swanny, what a nice young man. What a lovely young man. Thank you. You won't be featuring in any NRL stories. <laughs> no, I hope, well, I hope. I hope. I hope. Yeah. Fueled by fire, get it? See you, man.